these pieces all represent my way of seeing the world or the worlds that we live in and they represent what I see are the powers that are arrayed against us and the powers that are arrayed on our side and they also represent prayers to protect us I love this world where the whole universe was magical and the world was magical when people would look up at the sky and say that's a demon or it's a saint now of course we think that that can't be the case whereas I think it can be the case. Sometimes they take, the dif uh, take different forms. But I think that we're in... I think we've always been in the middle of a war, a war uh, of the powers of good, the principalities of good against the powers and the principalities of evil. So these are energies that are hostile. This here is... Uh, a demiurge, this is a higher energy, but still hostile, still at war with us. These pieces here, they're just prayers. They're prayers from scripture. Normally it's just a short phrase, uh, obviously written in English, because I can't, you know, I, I'm not going to write cursive Coptic because it's uh, too obscure and too difficult. But, so perhaps it's just the phrase, God is love, repeated thousands and thousands of times, and it's a prayer. The word I'm writing is liar. This is going to be an image of Satan tempting Christ as the sun. And Satan is the liar, was always a liar. So his face, his mask, he does, is made up of the word liar, written thousands of times, in a continual anti-prayer and protection against his mask and his lies. It was the pastel pieces that I started doing first. And these came... I started doing these probably about five years ago, six years ago. The reason I started doing this continual hallucinatory script I suppose really comes from my um, my reading St. Paul when he says pray without ceasing, the prayer of the heart where you continue to pray even when you're, you're no longer aware that you're praying. So I felt that how would the prayer of the heart look if we were going to write it? Of course it might not look like anything, it might just look like silence with a pen. but. For someone who's not enlightened or clear or pure, such as myself, it takes the effect of a continual stream of word. I think one day this is going to cause me my eyesight. And in so doing, I'll be blind like those two geniuses, John Milton and Stevie Wonder. <laughs> but it, it, it hurts the hand. It really does hurt the hand a lot. Because this will take me a long, long time. Liar, liar, liar. Liar. Invocation of Hallucinatory Mountain was the overall title, and some Gnostic cartoons was the title specifically of the pieces that were on show. I did 93 pieces, of which we showed 39 in the some Gnostic cartoons series. Invocation of Hallucinatory Mountain is the title of part one of the current 93 trilogy, the Hallucinatory Mountain trilogy. And a lot of the pieces that I did in the show were connected with Hallucinatory Mountain uh, because I was also recording the album at the same time. 
And hallucinatory mountain in itself is connected with the birth of man, man as Aleph, man as Adam. So it's the birth of us all and our descent from the paradise of the hallucinatory mountain to the world on our ascent once again to somewhere that perhaps doesn't even exist, except in our imagination. These are hallucinatory mountains. In this sense, it's a dream of the end of the world. The hallucinatory mountains arise, and the hallucinatory mountains also were there at the beginning. In a linear view of this universe, which for the... Uh, I, I guess I take, I'm a linearist, perhaps. These are the mountains that arise, and these are the, at the beginning of time, and they arise at the end of time. Constellations shift into uh, certain forms, and Christ reappears, the second coming. <laughs>